So we're ready to tip Gonzaga, the fourth seed in their white uniforms. UC Irvine, the 13th seed in their navy blue and black uniforms. Fourth time these two teams have met. Gonzaga leads the series 2-1, and we are underway. Will be interesting to see right now how Gonzaga handles the pressure of UC Irvine at the start. They saw a different kind of defense in their last game against a lot of zone. Today, they're going to see much more man-to-man -man pressure. High low. Pretty good Irvine defense to disrupt that attempt. We're going to talk about it as the game goes, but particularly for Gonzaga, you're going to see a lot of that high-low action. You're going to have one post that can get on the block and the other one to stretch the floor. Usually, it's Ejim on the block. She was the passer that time. Step back. Maxwell rimming off, one and done. That's going to be critical for the Anteaters. Getting on those boards. Pulling up and shooting, and just like that, Kanate. She's not going to be your great perimeter shooter, but she's that pull-up dribble shooter right in the foul line area or wants to go to the basket, penetrate, and get her teammates involved. Back rim it off. Maxwell on the triple. She's, she's not coming out bashful. No. <laughs> she's got the green light, doesn't she, Mike? Yes, she does. When you make as many threes as she does, you can shoot all night. Heck yeah. 91 triples and counting for that Utah transfer. Aggressive take by Lee to draw that foul. Yeah, she's she's really been that's been a staple of her game trying to get in the lane especially from the wings and the corners the the long the long jump shot has been more of a work in progress and Turn a great over. steal Well, we'll try to keep you straight on the Trong sisters here. We will. Just know that Kaylin wears number 14. She's got the ball. Kaylee wears number number 11. There Gonzaga. we are, trying to, trying to get Ejim on the block. And so far, Gonzaga has not been crisp in execution, and Irvine's defense has had something to say about that. They're trying to take away the easy post up, three quarter and on the top side, trying to have backside help to prevent the lob pass inside. Wow, Irvine has really is really fired up with the defense. And Tamara Inouye, in her eighth year, second winningest at Irvine, says they hang their hat on defense. And they do. So Trong, Kaylee, will take a seat with her second personal foul. That is absolutely huge. Little checking in for Gonzaga. 48 having to go to her bench. She was tasked with trying to keep Kanade in front. And you, you know, it's one thing on the defensive end to get a foul, but you can't get one for a moving screen at the other end. Good board, Maxwell. There's the pressure right now by UC Irvine. There's the steal by Irvine and Lee. And Kay Lintrong is going to pick up that foul. Gonzaga, Gonzaga cannot afford this foul. Great pressure by Lee right here. It's just staying with it. She's got active hands, gets the breakout, and then gets the foul from behind. Just a, a trip up. One of those things just got feet tangled. So third team foul on Gonzaga. Kay Lintrong already sitting with two fouls. Her sister has the other one. Well, we talked about it yesterday watching practices, but as a coach, the one thing you don't want to have it happen in a game is putting the other team in the bonus early. Look at Egypt battling inside with Kanate. Wow. And we got a foul here in UC Irvine. Just pressure. You can't have your guards on either team getting in foul trouble early. Yep. You read my mind, Mike, as Kanate picks up that foul, her first, team's first. Gonzaga still looking to get on the board. It's two to nothing. There's the full court press right again. A little bit of a zone press to start. High low, Ejim wants it. Perfect dish inside from Hollingsworth. If, if Gonzaga gets that going throughout the game, they are a tough guard because that high low is devastating. Especially when you can surround them with three-point shooters. Long ball, Tom. Wow! Well, Nikki Tom is not known for being a great three-point shooter, but she shot that with a lot of confidence. She did. Irvine not 
known for shooting three-pointers well at all as a team, but that helps the confidence. You're right. Yeah, Tom is a 24%, I think, three-point shooter. Five to two, Eaters with the lead. Side of the basket. Ball knocked away. Kind of sloppy right now, Mike. Well, we asked both coaches, but particularly Lisa Fortier of Gonzaga, if she thought nerves would be an issue after the results in their conference tournament. They didn't look like a team with nerves yesterday, but they have a little bit of that feel to them right now. Busted play, not there for Kaylin Trong. Ejim, offensive rebound, wild scrum for the ball. Great hustle play by Little. Everybody going to the deck, jump ball. Zaga might have got away with a little push fall on a loose ball there. So Mount Hybens will check in for Gonzaga and Lisa Fortier in her 10th year, 10 20 win seasons. This is the first time she's hit the 30 win category. Seven straight NCAA appearance, six time WCC Coach of the Year. Man. Parkinson checking in. As soon as Parkinson checks in games, they try to run post up plays for her. Ejim skying for the board. Ejim so dynamic, giving you 18 points a pop, nearly nine boards a pop. And Lee is going to pick up that foul. Well, it'll be interesting, you know, when you're trying to be a pressure team like UC Irvine is, you know, what you can get away with with the officials at the early, early parts of the game. And I think you find out at the start of the tournament, they're going to call it tight. Then you see how it goes from there. Nahum checking in for Irvine. It's five to two eaters with the lead under six to go in this low scoring start of the game. Maxwell pulls up and hits. Well, we, we have players doing things out of character. Tom making threes for UC Irvine and Maxwell putting it on the floor to drive when she normally shoots threes. Five to four. And we ask yesterday coach in a way about you know Parkinson when she checks in they run place where normally she would probably be a starter but they don't want to get her in foul trouble so they bring her in and then they run the offense around her when she comes in nice footwork there by Parkinson to get that reverse in so teams trading buckets right now seven to four Irvine with the lead they're making their first NCAA appearance since 1995 are the eaters coming off their first ever Big West Tournament Championship, and they came ready to go. So the kennel is packed, it's a sold out, but right now it's Irvine. For UC Irvine has given them a little confidence uh, to get themselves started. When you look at what Irvine has done, stifling defense, and know this, only one time have the Eaters given up 70 points during regular season play, and that was in overtime. They just don't let you score, Mike. Well, we'll see which, you know, we said at the start, this is going to be a little bit of a test of wills. We'll see which wins out. The other part of it, too, you know, from a scoring standpoint, Irvine is not, UC Irvine is not afraid to get out and run, but if they don't have the early break, they're willing to make a bunch of extra passes, and now the tempo slows down a little bit. And here comes the heat, a la what Portland did to Gonzaga in the WCC Tournament Championship, Mike. It unsettled these eggs. It did. It, it, and it was a different kind of style. Another pick. Another pick. Kanate has just been on fire both ends of the floor. Long ball. Nahum into the hands of Kaylin Tron. Here comes Gonzaga. Pull up three. Not there yet for Maxwell. One and done. Good job on the defensive boards by C.D. Baba and her compadres. Well, and a little bit there for Maxwell. She's kind of a security blanket for them a little bit. Knocking down threes when, you're, when your best three-point shooter goes 0 for 3 to start the game. You start to look around and say, okay, how are we going to get better looks right now? Long ball. Kanate. <laughs> Come on now. That's her second three of the entire season. That is unbelievable. 7-0 Irvine run. I guess if you want to pull an upset, you got to make a few of those. And how. We got a long way to go, but what a start for the Eaters. 
12 to 4, 315 left to go in front of the sold out house at the kennel. Kaylin Trong looking to bail out, extra pass, Hybens banks it in. I know she didn't call it. Doesn't matter, huh? She still counts as three. Gonzaga has won 34 straight here at the kennel. 34 straight. Great hustle. Everybody going to the deck. Jump ball. Gonzaga ball. Great job of fronting the post to come up with that steal. I still can't get over the fact that Kanate hit a three. <laughs> <laughs> she was like so open. She goes, well, I might as well try one. Try. You know, most people try a heat check after they've made a couple. <laughs> she did it to start. You know, she had just come off the last possession with an incredible dish to Parkinson. Then she comes down and drills the triple. How about that? And then, you know, it's funny. You start feeling good about yourself. Um, it's amazing what you can do when the mental part's working for you. Claire O'Connor in for Gonzaga. High percentage shot for a high percentage EGM, and she misses. Yep, I mean, that was a well-drawn-up play uh, out of the previous timeout. Whoa! And one! Lee! Well, you let her go to her strong hand from the top of the floor. Deja Lee at the top, going right, is a, is a weapon. And this time, not only a weapon, but gets the extra free throw from it. Little picks up that foul, and that took some guts because she goes right into the teeth at 6-2. Three-point play. Man. And here's the press. Right after you, you let him go to the line, you're going to let him get to the line. You can't foul like that, though. They're so good in their press. They've been disciplined all season about playing their press without a lot of fouls. Nahum, by the way, picks up that foul, her first team's third. 15-6, Irvine. Look at the hands. They're City just Baba. active. Yep. Nothing coming easy for the Zags at this point. Two minutes to go in this first quarter. It's been all Irvine. At the rim, you bet, CD Baba. All Irvine. Seventeen six double digit lead for the Anteaters over the fourth seed Zags top 20 team crazy <laughs> Welcoming everyone watching Princeton and West Virginia we are in Spokane, Washington, 13th seeded UC Irvine, number four seed Gonzaga, and it's been the Eaters ruling the roost, Mike Tebow. Well, wow. I mean, first of all, for those of you just joining, UC Irvine has been on fire at both ends. They've been active on the defensive end, active hands, um, make, knock some shots, but I don't know about this being a foul. It's a great lob play unless she got hit from behind. Um, but she kind of just came down awkwardly in the middle of two defenders. Still struggling. Great I mean, offensive rebound. You love that because it's the high percentage look coming from your three-point sniper and O'Connor sneaks in. And now we have Gonzaga in a zone. Now who blocked Hollingsworth. Take that. That's a great block. They, they needed a defensive stop, and they need to finish the possession right here. They're in the zone. Hollingsworth comes, goes straight up, actually gets it with both hands. 14 on the shot clock. The Anteaters will inbound. Unlucky there. Turnover. Just stumbled on her way out to the corner. From where we're sitting, it was hard to see if she stepped on somebody's foot or just lost her balance. Packed house here at the kennel. That last block by Hollingsworth giving them a reason to cheer. They need a few more. 
They need somebody to knock down a long jump shot, which is kind of a staple of their offense. And they're, they're 0 for right now. Less than a minute to go in the first quarter. Kaylee Chong with two fouls, checking back into the Gonzaga lineup. Here she is. Wraparound pass into Ejim, you bet. That's, that's Gonzaga at their best right now. Space the floor, Ejim touches it on the block. One-on-one -on -one coverage. Six-second differential between Back shot in the one-two-two two two zone. <sighs> Nothing there on the triple. Ball up for grabs. So that was an air ball. Nine seconds on the shot clock is Kaylin Trong and Esther Little will check in for Gonzaga. Trying to protect Kaylee right here with her fouls. Sharp will inbound safely into the hands of Tom. She's only got seven seconds to get something going. Got to put it up. She doesn't know the shot clock. Wasted possession there for the Eaters, 5.9. The, the only good part of that for UC Irvine is that it wasn't a live ball turnover. Now they can put their press on for the last six seconds of the quarter. Boy, here comes the heat. Ejim, Ejim! So little, that'll do a it. A little bit strong. <laughs> <laughs> what a first quarter for the UC Irvine Anteaters, huge underdogs. They're just knocking down shots, they're pressuring, they're forcing turnovers, stepping into easy jump shots. They have ruled on that team. Um, it's very, very great mixed group and they have great camaraderie. Second quarter underway, that score is accurate. Irvine leading Gonzaga 17 to 10 as the second quarter commences from the kennel. Well, we've seen a lot of games uh, both days of the tournament where the underdog has come out and gotten to a good start. We'll see how that changes as the game goes along. Wild shot into the hands of Ejim and now Kaylin Trong. Ejim, little hesitation, ball on the deck, wild shot. Might have been a foul on the elbow, but it, you're going that full speed, you don't always get benefit. Well, the other thing that's changed the game here, as we can see for Gonzaga, is the zone. They, they were getting beat off the dribble man-to-man. -man. They're trying to take away the penetration and make UC Irvine shoot jump shots, and they've, they've managed to do that the last couple of possessions. So we're still at 17-10 early in the second quarter in Spokane, Washington. Mid-range is there if Egypt wants it. Why not? Why not? And that, that's, you know, probably a good, smart thing by UC Irvine to at least test her, see if you want to shoot that. She'd rather get herself in the lane. Egypt now with the six points, four boards, double, double machine is that young woman. Good hands, Hollingsworth. Here comes Tom. She'll draw the foul and go to the line. So tomorrow, the NCAA Women's Championship second round begins on ABC with North Carolina taking on undefeated South Carolina. That's at 1 p.m. Eastern, 10 a.m. Pacific. Then, Middle Tennessee mm, squares off against LSU. And on ESPN, it's Duke, Ohio State. That's at noon Eastern, followed by Colorado, Kansas State. All games are also available on the ESPN app. Well, it's amazing what it can do for your confidence. You get a couple stops in a row. Uh, your defense gets it. Now we're getting a little bit of three-quarter court pressure, probably back into the zone, but they'll trap out of it. Extra pass. Tom lets her fly. Back rim and off into the hands of Kaylin Trong. Eight-nothing Gonzaga run, and they're looking to add to it. Nothing's been working from beyond the arc, but you got a feeling that's going to change. 
roll for Kaylee Tong. Nice bounce off the three-point shot to get an offensive rebound. Closest it's been since five to four. Crowd is up and roaring. Another long ball, not there. Offensive board, but poked away. Here comes Kaylee Tong. Extra pass, Ejim. Wow, that's pretty good transition defense by Irvine. It was. She probably Ejim probably needed to come to a jump stop and let the defense fly by her. That's a tough shot when you're getting caught under the rim. Great pass though by Tron. Nevaeh Dean on the floor for Irvine. Ball on the deck. The strength of CD Baba. You see, Irvine needed that to get a score against the zone because it's been all mid-range jump shots for three out of the last four possessions. So the lead is three. You and can just hear the crowd groan when she misses. Yeah, so 0 for 10 from beyond the arc, yet another offensive rebound and putback. Well, when you go to the zone like UC Irvine just has the last couple possessions, boxing out on long jump shots becomes a more of an issue. Cutter not there. Good hands, Hollingsworth. Here comes Gonzaga. Pope checked away. Ejim wants the garbage bucket. Not there. Hollingsworth offensive rebound again for Gonzaga. Well, right now, Gonzaga owns the offensive boards. Almost all of their scores have come on offensive rebounds. Crowd is up. First lead of the game for Gonzaga. And a run out. Great save. Not there. Maxwell. And the foul is going to go against Gonzaga. Mike, you look at a Gonzaga <laughs> team right now, 0 for 10 from beyond the arc, and this is one of the best shooting teams from distance in the country. Yeah, if you had told me that how this game was going to start, I'd have said you're crazy because that's that's kind of where they get a lot of their confidence. Right now, they're getting their confidence from the defensive end on the zone and from offensive rebounding. 20 to 19, Gonzaga with the lead. Nothing there. Love the offensive rebound by Parkinson. Again, another zone offensive rebound on this end of the floor. Yep. And now the press gets a chance to set itself. Back and forth we go. Foul will go against Nahum. That is her second. It's a little bit interesting, too. For, from Gonzaga's standpoint, I don't know that you would see Egypt take this many, you know, quick breaths uh, in a first half of a game. But the pace up and down for her running the middle of the floor uh, has led them to, to try to get her some extra time on the bench. Big the triple. Go crazy. Big triple. <laughs> Finally, <laughs> one goes down from distance, and it's Hollingsworth, a good three-point shooter. Yeah, they, they just needed to see that. I think just, as I said earlier, it's a confidence thing when you rely on those. Let's see how the Anteaters respond. Sharp. Not there. We're going to stay right here. Good inside positioning by Parkinson. The NCAA Women's Championship is presented to you. Well, Hollingsworth for Gonzaga has gotten it going. The block shot on one end. The steal starts the break. Then she's going to be an offensive rebounder. Gets an easy putback. And then the coup de grace, a wide open first three of the game for Gonzaga. And the crowd goes wild because they're feeling like Gonzaga again. Hollingsworth, who has just been on fire as of late. WCC tournament, she averaged 16 and a half, 11 and a half in terms of points and rebounds. Out of that timeout though, wow. Well, that's the first bucket Lee has had from, since really early in the game. 
Here's the press. The press right now for UC Irvine is more to make Gonzaga use a little bit more clock to start their offense. Now they're starting their offense at 20 seconds instead of 24, 25. Ivans gobbled up on the baseline. Nine on the shot clock for O'Connor. Throws it right into the midst of Irvine. I think those drives for Gonzaga on the baseline are going to be tough to make passes out of. There's four defenders coming to the lane. You're going to be able to have to skip it somewhere else, throw cross court, but those five foot, six foot passes in the lane are tough. 23 apiece. Irvine looking to reclaim that lead. It was once double figures for the Anteaters. Lee hesitates. Can't get the roll inside. One bounce. Blocked from behind by Hybens, and here comes Kalen Trong. They got numbers right here. Trong rimming out. Runner not there. Ball, good hustle play by Parkinson. Batted into the hands of Lee. Here come the Eaters. This is another rare occurrence for UC Irvine right now. Playing the, both of their post players that normally alternate for each other. Now they're playing off of each other right now. Dean to Parkinson. Parkinson, the 6'2 senior out of Dallas, showing the good hands and footwork underneath. She's got eight right at her season average. Long ball, strong. Finally, says Kaylin. She actually mouthed the words, finally. <laughs> finally. All the way down, she's shaking her head like, I gotta keep, I gotta keep this rhythm. Zags by a singleton, 2.35 left to go in this half. Picking up the dribble is Tom. Dumping it inside, good hands by Hybens. Unlucky there for Kaylin Trong, tied to tight rope if it stepped out of bounds. Stepped out of bounds. But again, you're in a situation. For the fourth straight year, every single NCAA Women's Championship game is on the networks of ESPN. For more info, go to NCAA.com, your home for all 90 NCAA championships. Leaping high, CD Baba, she'll bring it out. Here's Kanate. The transfer from Idaho State. Front women off, Egypt gobbles up that rebound, nearing a double-double already is Egypt. Under two to go in the half, Gonzaga up by one. Heavy favorites in this game. Trying to get a cross screen here to get Egypt on the block. Little almost Plays. lost it. Plays just kind of all messed up at this point, and now they got to scramble. Three on the shot clock. Hail Mary, not there. Parkinson, scrum, bodies flying, and ball stays with Gonzaga. I think they're going to put it back to 20 on, yes, 20 on the shot clock on the offensive board. Plenty of time, Egypt single coverage. Wow, good defense inside. Parkinson into the hands of Kanate. Long ball, lead. Rimming out. Great Egypt. Block out. Runs the floor. Egypt on both ends. You bet. She excels at that. See Irvine looking to get a great possession. They don't want this to get away a little bit at the end of the half. Gonzaga up by three, under a minute to go. Egypt already in double figures at 10. It is really physical inside right now with Parkinson and Egypt. Well, this, this whole play started with uh, Egypt getting a great defensive rebound and then out sprinted everybody to get ahead. I mean, she was way behind and got ahead. That's a great effort by Egypt to outrun five, six, seven players on the court. Egypt already in double figures. 
That is no news. It's news when she isn't in double figures, because that just doesn't happen. Great pass. Wow. I mean, that was a zipper into the hands of Ejim. Trong and, and Ejim just have this kind of sixth sense between them. 12 points now for Ejim. Listen to the crowd. Last shot time. Shot clock off, game clock at 10. Right here. Kanate. Dribble, long ball, air ball. Great defensive possession by Gonzaga to end the half here. Biggest lead of the game for Gonzaga. You're looking at it. 1.2 left to go in the half. At one point, the Eaters led by double figures. Long ball. Not there. 30-25. Gonzaga with the big-time second quarter rally. Now leading UC Irvine by five. Time to go to the studio. Kelsey Riggs, we can't wait to hear what all of you experts have to say. And, and it wasn't working for them today, and so a good coach makes adjustments. They came out of a timeout uh, late in the first quarter, and Lisa Fortier had them in a 1-2-2 two, two, or 3-2 zone, and it just changed the flow of the game for UC Irvine. You saw it. And the here numbers. it is right now, too. Yes, as third quarter is underway, and you saw the numbers, you know, shockingly bad for Gonzaga in terms of three-point shooting. You expect that to change. Athletic move. Couldn't get it. C.D. Baba loved the idea, but here comes Trong. Well set up play against the zone. Just didn't finish it. Ball belongs to the Anteaters. Again, we're just underway here at the third quarter. Fourth seeded Gonzaga, ranked number 16th in the country, coming in with 30 wins against UC Irvine. The 13th seed, Ann Eaters, saying, huh, you don't think we got a chance, huh? We're in this thing. Well, it'll be interesting to see what they do a little bit differently against the zone. Obviously, it bothered them in the first half, and when you're not a great three-point shooting team, the zone makes it a little bit tougher. Like the idea by Kanate going up and under the taller defender. Offensive rebound is there. Triple try. Air ball. And the ball belongs to Gonzaga. Somewhere along the line here in this third quarter, UC Irvine's going to have to make a couple of those to keep the defense honest. If they don't, they're going to see what they've seen for the last 15 minutes of game action. UC Irvine really doesn't push it from beyond the arc. They average about 17 attempts per game. They are already at 12 or 13. Maxwell, pull up Jay. She has been cold. Ejim. Great offensive rebound. She, she just keeps going. And Dean's in a tough position trying to box her out on every single one of those plays. She's so strong and physical. So Dean picks up her second. Team's first, that's how you do it. You see Irvine just went to sleep. Yep. I, th I think they had three people in the zone and two people playing man, and they never accounted for the most important person on the court. Egypt now with 14. Leads this club with 18 a pop. Biggest lead of the game for the Zags. And another great box out, and this triggers the break. They got numbers again if they want it. Look at Egypt run. Strong. Sweet move and finish. Well, if Ejim hadn't run that hard on that one, she wouldn't have gotten the gap that she got to try to get that close to the basket. You've got to score here now if you're the Eaters, Mike. You just have to. CD Baba wants to go one on one. Good defense by Strong. Mid range, rimming out. Ejim. One and done. And there's a lot more flow to the game for Gonzaga right now. <laughs> Boom! There it is. Crowd's going nuts. And that's the backbreaker for our timeout. Sold out crowd here at the kennel is up. 
Well, when the ball is swung and you haven't made a three, you're hoping this one goes in. She shot it with the same confidence as she probably does on an afternoon by herself in the gym, and that works out for you. Loud here in Spokane at the McCarthy Athletic Center, affectionately known as the Kennel. Gonzaga continuing a massive run, now leading UC Irvine, Mike, by 12. Well, as we said, Yvonne Ejim has imposed her will on the game. Um, she's the dominant force in this game, and it's, it's carried over to the body language of her team. They had terrible body language in the first couple minutes when threes weren't going down. So she just basically came out and said, well, get on my back and I'll find different ways. You know, we showed you some of the ways, rebounds, little, little jump shots here and there, but she's been the dominant force in this game right now. Ejim, 14 points, 11 rebounds, her 14th double-double of the season. She has been an absolute machine and has been white hot the last six, seven games. Long ball, back rim and off. Kaylee Trong avoiding further foul trouble is going to find her sister. That's a good look in transition, though. You get a great three-point shooter wide open, just hit back rim. Lee picks up that dribble, and now Sidi Baba. Cold shooting continues to plague the Eaters. Well, Irvine back in there, man to man right now, trying to get matched up a little better. And a great defensive hands by Tom. That defense by Irvine really wreaking havoc early in this game. The Zags settling down and handling that pressure a little bit better. That's the first steal in a while for the Eaters. The other thing that's changed in this game, um, you know, early in the game, the first 15 possessions of the game, Gonzaga had four turnovers. They've gone 32 possessions since, or now probably 34 with only two. That's, that's what a big I'm difference. About. You take care of the basketball. Yep. Parkinson continues to be a bright spot for the Eaters, a much-needed basket for Irvine. 37-27, 10 points now for Parkinson. Dumping it inside, whistle blows, that play did. The NCAA Men's Basketball Championship second round continues tonight on CBS, TBS, and TNT. For more information on tournament game times and networks, go to NCAA.com. Long ball, Maxwell, she's hit two in a row. Yeah, she high-fived everybody on uh, all the coaching staff as she ran by. It's like, okay, I got this back. Now a triple in every single game this season for Maxwell. Follow-up, nicely done. CD Baba will go to the line as she's fouled. Well, one of the ways to get yourself kind of back in the game if you're UC Irvine is to do what you just did there. Find some ways to get offensive boards. Get yourself to the free throw line. Easy putbacks, because everything else has been difficult for them on the perimeter. Hybins picks up that foul. Her first. Team's first. Here's C.D. Baba, the transfer from Miami. Seventy-one percent free throw shooter, more makes and takes than anybody wearing anteater gear. She'll try to split the difference and make this second one. Big West newcomer of the year. You're looking at her, but misses both. That's tough because you just worked so hard to get an offensive board to give it back right then. Gonzaga threatening to pull away. Wow, three straight. Maxwell is hopping, skipping, laughing, having a ball. Once you start feeling it. Body's flying. Here comes Kaylee Trong. Do you feed the beast and find Maxwell again? I think you got to think seriously about it. She's trying to chase it down. They're waiting for Hybens to get down the court, too. What a rally by Gonzaga. At one point, trailing by 11 points in the first half. And it's been all Gonzaga after a 20 to 8 second quarter. Hybens dumping it in Great low. Pass. And look at that the footwork and finish. And they're getting the same high low that they got with Egypt with their other post players. 
Collinsworth, so effective down low. CD Baba, she'll go to the line again, so aggressive with the take. Well, one of the ways to get back in the game, get back inside the lane. Maxwell, Maxwell from the top, Maxwell from the corner, Maxwell off the <laughs> pin down. It's the Maxwell show. The one bright spot for UC Irvine with 10 and 6, and obviously we've been talking about Ejim for a while, and she's fueled this big run and got the run started for them. That's now become 34-10 since the end of the first quarter. Parkinson is the only one to score for Irvine over the last eight and a half minutes and should tell you that a point was taken off of the scoreboard for Gonzaga as the last three-pointer ruled a three, foot on the line, down to a deuce, but still a healthy Gonzaga lead. Yeah, Maxwell wasn't worried about whether she was behind the line or in front of her. She just wanted to shoot it. <laughs> as soon as it touched her hands, it was out. Now we got a half-court trap coming here for UC Irvine. Sharp back on the floor for Irvine. If you dribble down in the corners, they're going to try to trap you. Wide open, Kaylee Trong hits it. Great pass out by Ejim from the corner. Crowd a lot more comfortable with this lead as the carry goes against Kanate. Well, you find Ejim getting herself down on the baseline on a pass. Normally that gets trapped. She finds the three-point shooter and Trong's ready and, and loaded up to shoot. I mean, UC Irvine's in a position now where they just got to try some things different to disrupt the rhythm of the game. Play whistle dead. Got a foul call right before the travel. Yep. Nahum picks up her third. Team's third. Trong avoids the trap. Now Egypt. Jab step, nothing there. Kaylee, another three, you bet. It's like shooting practice right now. They're just getting great looks because so much attention is being paid to now to Maxwell and, and Egypt. Now both Trongs have had looks in the last four or five minutes. CD Baba backs it out. Gonzaga looking like Gonzaga. And finally, something gets down for Lee. Well, you see Irvine got out of that. They went back to man because the 1-3-1 one, one wasn't getting it done. Kaylee Trong. And now Egypt baseline so quick. What a finish. She saw, she saw a matchup she liked to drive. And she just begged for the ball back. You know, she wanted she Tron wanted her to run a ball screen and she said, no, give me the ball, let me go one on one on the baseline. I have quickness right now. Look at that defense. You love it by O'Connor. For the fourth straight year, every NCAA Women's Championship game is on the networks of ESPN. For more information, go to NCAA.com, your home for all 90 NCAA championships. Gonzaga back in the zone this possession. We're getting deep into the third quarter, a quarter owned by Gonzaga. That's the same play they ran to start the half. Swarming defense inside, nothing for CD Baba. Shot clock violation. It just took UC Irvine way too long to try to get the play. They had what they wanted on the lob, but once the defense was there, they ran out of shot clock time. Fortier able to go deep into her bench. And that's not, that, that's not the norm for coaches at this time of year. But I think, you know, the level of what they're playing and the, the performance they've gotten from different, the effort that some of their players have extended, they need some rest. Nine on the shot clock. Good help defense. Really good swarming defense. There were three players surrounding Hollingsworth. They were there, and, and they got there at the, at the time the ball arrived, too. One of the best things about good double teams is arriving, you know, the ball's coming from the corner in. 
and the defense is there, and now they get a third defender to get the tie up. Hyvins off balance, can't get it down. Another whistle. And that's a frustration foul. You yep. miss an easy layup. You know, don't compound it by going over somebody's back and getting a cheap foul. Luckily, Hyvins. it doesn't cost them with a bonus. Picks up her second. Her second team, or excuse me, her second personal third team foul. But 45 left to go in this third quarter. Good defense by O'Connor. Wide open look, Kanate rimming out. Unlucky there, basket didn't want it. Look like bowling pins going down Boy, in the no lane. Boy, no kidding, 10-7 split back there for the Zags. Hollingsworth guarded closely by Tom. And Nikki will pick up the foul. Her first, team's fourth. I mean, that was probably worth, you know, a gamble there. Your pressure is not the bonus yet. You get a chance to see if you can get a rip. Trong takes the pick, hesitates, run in, runs into the double. Nothing there, high, low. Here's Little. Nine on the shot clock for Trong. Turnover Zags. At the risk of a really bad pun, she zagged when she thought she was going to zig because actually the, the lob pass was going to the right place and Hollingsworth moved on her. I'm going to give it to you, Mike. I'm going to give it to you. A little corny, but I like it. Each of them back in. I had to get a bad dad joke in there once, you know. Keep them coming, Mike. Minute left in the third. Long ball. Front rim and off. Parkinson. Ejim thought she had all ball, but Nevaeh will go to the line. Ejim picks up that foul, her second. Well, Parkinson is a force in there on the offensive boards. She clears out space, she gets position. It might have been a clean block, but she earned to get herself yep, yep. that possession. Transfer from New Mexico, the 6'2 senior out of Dallas. She's really having herself a game. And I would say she was a big factor in their tournament play and their tournament wins because they ran a lot of stuff for her against teams that couldn't handle her on the block. Sixth player of the year in her conference. Hits a pair. Back to the 2-2-1 press. Parkinson in double figure. She's got 12 points. Career high is 17. She's having herself a game. Egypt, deep, fades away, hits, and she's fired up. Honor Keister and let the world know with a big roar. Another great move. She, she knows she has a little bit of a quickness advantage right now. And so she gets the ball. She's going to drive it and make somebody else have to make a play on her. That's the second time in the last four possessions that she's gotten driving angles. Takes on Parkinson as Nevaeh picks up her third. And again, the great... Yvonne Ejim, player of the year. Defensive player of the year. Where she came from her freshman season, didn't play much, didn't score, didn't rebound, to where she is now, unbelievable. She's getting a happy break now. <laughs> and announced recently that she's coming back next year in front of the home folks and the kennel went nuts. Yes, and Lisa Fortier probably went home and had a glass of champagne or red wine or something to celebrate. Heck yeah. I think a bottle's still on ice knowing that she's coming back. Rattling, rattling, and finally getting home is Lee. We need to get a couple stops in a row to go with this. Got to put it up if you're Kevin. So that'll do it for six going into the fourth quarter. A veteran Bulldog group that is really showing its mettle. Yeah, I mean, they're one of the most veteran teams in the country. You have four grad students 
and a senior in their starting lineup, and their young freshmen really don't play much. They, they have, this group has played together for quite a while now. They talked about it in their press conference yesterday about how they play for each other, how much this means uh, to them to try to finish this season the right way, and, and all the little things that they've done along the way. They're proud of, and they're going to you know, try to carry this in for a couple weeks here. And the fact that they're hosting It's Been a While is so special because they know this community shows up, shows out. I think it was Hollingsworth who said yesterday, we know we have, if we win tomorrow, we have two games left on our home court yeah. for this senior group, and we're going to try to make the most of it. Waiting in the wings, Mike, Utah, South Dakota State. That is going to be a great game. Gonzaga will meet the winner of that contest in the second round. Yeah, they, uh, that contest will be very interesting. You have a mid-major and a Power Five conference that play so much similar basketball, and we'll talk about it when we get to the broadcast, but they're really, really good, good teams. Kaylee Tron stepping into that jumper off the glass. She's got 12. And I know this huge crowd of Gonzaga fans will stick around to see who they're going to play. You bet. They'll be scouting from the stands. Ball tipped around into the hands of Kaylee Tron, trying to avoid Kanate. Maxwell bumped. Dean got her. That's her third. Dean probably did stop a good offensive possession for Gonzaga, but they're running out of time right now to make something significant happen. You know, and, 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 and you know, as a coach, if you're a coach in a way, you know, you know you're limited in certain areas and you accentuate the positive things all long, all year long. They've been able to win a lot of games with their defense, hold people under 70. You know, this is this is a different story tonight, and you have to make jump shots at some point. You know, it can't be the anti-analytics team for very long. It gets you this far, but it catches up with you at some point. Maxwell launches it. It is fouled from beyond the arc by Tom. It was a desperation three, and Maxwell will go to the line. That's just not a good foul. You had a, uh, an offensive player going sideways, way behind the three. You don't need to bail him out with a foul. And just when you think you're getting your breath a little bit, as, as you see Irvine, Ejen comes back in the game, ready to inflict more punishment. Here's Maxwell, the transfer from Utah. You saw the emotion when she finally got off the schneid and got rid of the collar and started to hit from deep. You get to see Shooter's body language change. Now, that's a no-no if you're if for, for a coach. Giving up an offensive rebound on a free throw is like you didn't block out. Maxwell picks up that foul. Her first, team's first, as Sharp checks back in for the Anteaters. All right, this game well in hand, Mike, but at one point, UC Irvine led by 11 in the first quarter. What have you liked about this club today? By uh, UC Irvine? Yep. I, I, I like the fact that, you know, this is going to be uh, a whole learning thing for them with the players coming back. They get a fair amount of players back. Um, they know as a staff there's, there's weaknesses that you have. You've got to try to address those in the offseason on the recruiting trail. And this is going through this experience. None of these players, for, as a general rule, have played in a game like this. You know, a conference tournament is one thing, but you know who you're playing against. You've seen them all year. This is now a step up, and you've got to figure it out. You know, as I've watched a lot of these games the last two days, that's what, you know, a lot of the mid-major teams are trying to figure out if you want to get to that level. Only the second NCAA appearance in UC Irvine history, the first since 1995. And most of these players, or all of these players, were not born. Oh, heck no. Mike, so. you were barely born. <laughs> I wish. <laughs> Kaylee Tron fighting, fighting, man. She's fouled. Yeah, the last appearance for UC Irvine is a rumor to them. They, they just see it on a, on a note paper. They're, they want to forge their own identity going forward. I like that. Tom picks up her third, by the way. Team's fourth. Yes. They will learn and build from this. But Gonzaga finally got that offense clicking. Figured out that Irvine defense. 
and, and I think they got it clicking too because they got a little bit few run outs off of their defense. That, the biggest key to this game so far in the change to me was going from man to zone, which they don't normally do, and changing how you see Irvine had to play offensively. Made them shoot all jump shots for a long stretch. That's a really good move by Lee. She coaxes the foul from Kaylee Traum. That's her third. Remember, she had two very early, avoiding further foul trouble, but that's her third. And what Lee took advantage of there is that they didn't let the zone get set. They were to push the ball off the floor, get in a gap before any defense was set up to cut down the penetration. 7.30 left to go in the fourth. 58-36. Gonzaga with the healthy lead. Long ball, Lee. Buries it. Look good when it left out of her hand. If she's got some wide open jump shot, I feel like it's going in. It's, it's, it's the ones when she's pressured right now. How do you learn how to make those shots, shots on the move? Lee's got 13 points, one off her season average. Up 14, Egypt with the answer though. And, and now she's got 15 points for 17, 20 point game of the season like. Well, that's one of the questions I think people have about her. Can she enter the range and then make a shot? A couple of them tonight, but I'm not saying that she can keep doing that. She should be an unbelievable force a year from now, you know, you know being able to play on the block and out on the perimeter. Little, little, and Holland's great training in for Gonzaga. So I so had a happy trip to WAA. Coaching and GM cap on. Is each of that next level kind of player? I think, I, I, I think people will assume that she will be. She certainly is from a, from a rebound and a power player in the lane. I, I think the question is of her height can she change? Can she make enough perimeter jump shots? Major player like Jim, who's so focused on the defense, and 
get get some get 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 Offensive rebounds for the Zags. Make it 14. And the charge is going to go against Egypt. That's her fourth. She she can't quite believe it. Here's the drive. Yeah, that one's tough. Um, I'm not sure that Parkinson was completely there. I, might have still been going sideways. Dean checking in, Parkinson with the grin. Maybe it's a little Cheshire Cat grin. I'm not sure. Well, she also uh, kind of gave the crowd a little, like, you know, well, you guys are booing, but <laughs> I got one. CD Baba fouled on the drive. Little picks up her second. Team sixth. All right. Now, I know this is a big lead right here, but if you're Lisa Forty, and I know she's looking and saying something, she's putting some of her starters back in because she hasn't liked the last minute and a half. The fouls that are occurring, um, you don't want to get sloppy at the end of the game. You want to walk out of here saying we did everything the right way. 
And, and you're, you're preparing for the next game that way. You're not, you know, you're not trying to just nitpick. You are, you are trying to get the right mindset for Monday night. Sidi Baba, the transfer out of Miami, playing in her final game in an anteater uniform in double figures now. Good patience by Trong right there. Knew the trap wasn't coming up the sideline, took her time. 12 on the shot clock here for Gonzaga. Egypt elevating and scoring. That's a really nice move. When she gets to her left shoulder in the middle of the lane, it's almost unstoppable. First time in regulation that UC Irvine has given up 70 points in a ball game this year. And Gonzaga is starting so slowly, it's now clinical. It is. Um, what they've done in the second half um, uh, at both ends of the floor, they've been good defensively, mixing their zone and their man. They've done a better job of blocking out other than a couple possessions in the last couple minutes. And then that's triggered their offense. They've gotten run outs, they've gotten easy runs down the lane. They've, made, they've found the right person in Egypt trying to get her going. And she has matchups that, that favor them. 71-47, bump 50 left to go in this game. Gonzaga gives you 80 points, 82 points a game, Mike. That's 10 points more than last year. And it just shows the progression of this club. The veterans just keep getting better, and they add some other pieces. Well, it ha it's really it's a comforting thing for a coach to have a team that has all five starters in double figures on a nightly basis. It also makes it tough to scout you, too. You know, yeah. It would be one thing to play against Ejim um, and defend her if you didn't have to worry about three people knocking down threes on the outside or somebody penetrating and finding and kicking. But you do. You have to worry about that. A little with her third foul. Lisa Fortier not happy with the fouls right now. I know I just mentioned a minute ago, but she has got that look on her face like, come on, this has got to stop. And come, you know, you're... you're you're coming at it from a coach's vantage point. Who else better to do that than you? And you can see by her body language, Mike. Yep. She's not happy. She wanted this game to be over, you know, a minute or two ago. As far as you don't, you don't want stoppages of play right now. You want to handle the press. You want to, you know, if you make a mistake offensively, don't turn it over. Don't foul. And another foul. Yep. And one. Sloppy pass against the press. You don't get back in position. Yeah, I mean, here, here you go. Worst case scenario, they make the shot. Don't put them at the line and stop play and let them set their press up again. Sidi Baba, the last few minutes, has just taken over offensively for this Irvine club. Yeah, I know the game is well in hand, but what a testimony to her. Three-point yep. play. And there's a subtle part to this, too. You know you're being scouted if you're Gonzaga. And so do you want to give your opponent some things to look at and say, hey, maybe we want to do that. Seventy-one, fifty-two. What a game for Sidi Baba. Double-double for her. And I'm watching the body language on these UC Irvine kids. They know they're losing the game, but they're playing just as hard as they did at the start. They got a smile on their face, the effort is there, and they're going to play it out. And that's, that's, a, that's a good thing for them to carry forward. I have enjoyed watching Irvine play today. I really have. Now, if you were their coach, you might not have for about, you know, 20 minutes of it, but <laughs> well, I know, know what you mean, though. We watched them yesterday with an upbeatness to them about it, too, and how they prepared. Strong Parkinson. The timeout is to sub. That's just a quick transition sub. So Fortier knows her club will be advancing. The crowd is able to give Kaylin Trong and Ejim an ovation as they sub out. What a game for both of them, but especially Ejim with 25 points. 14 boards and four assists. And Coach Unaway got CeeDee Baba out too. Man. 
15 points and 12 boards for Sidi Baba. And Kaylee Chong just might as well get one more rhythm shot to get you ready for Monday night. Crowd is up. Sold out crowd here at the kennel. Ball block. One more bucket for Parkinson. Career high for Parkinson. She's got that going for her. And we're just not going to quite say goodbye yet, Mike. Yeah. I mean, I give UC Irvine credit for trying to play it out. Um, but a foul just adds a few more seconds to the game for us. So here's Kaylee Trong. She's got the 14 points, a couple of triples, two for two from the free throw line. I, re I really enjoy watching these two sisters play. Uh, they just, they're dynamic and, and they're just the most unselfish players. They're great shooters, but they're always looking for their teammates first. Crowd will tell the story. And that'll do it, 75-56 Gonzaga, trailing by 11 in the first quarter, defeating UC Irvine to advance to the second round on their own home floor, where they have now won 35 straight. Updating the bracket, regional four pod in Portland. Gonzaga